Welcome to our Self Mastery Journey podcast. We are so excited to have you along for the ride. We are your hosts, Kirsty and Michael Pratt. We started this podcast because we wanted to share with you the tools we use in our daily lives and our clients' daily lives to cultivate better health, confidence, authentic love, leadership skills, conscious relationships, and living out your life's purpose. Another big reason why we started this podcast is to build a community. Not only do we offer our Self Mastery Journey podcast, we also offer an exclusive online community to dive even deeper into the tools we share. We offer extended versions of our podcast episodes, bi-weekly coaching calls, bonus content, and so much more. Without further ado, let's dive into this podcast episode and give you the tools needed to live your best life. Welcome. Welcome, everyone. Hello. We are excited to be with you. Super excited. So this is the first episode of our podcast, and we wanted to really come in with showing you our why, why we're doing this, why we hope that you join us along the journey, and then an introduction of who we are, because we started this podcast heavily to share our story, our experiences, the tools we use, and create a community so everyone can come together and grow together and and be the best versions of themselves and be the leader you want to be in this world. Absolutely. And it's so important to understand and learn these <clears throat> skills because now more than ever, it's critical uh, to be able to stand confidently in who you are as a being. Um, that's not only going to help you move out through your own life circumstances, but that's going to create a ripple effect in every relationship that you have. Absolutely. And, you know, bear with us in these beginning stages, obviously getting out the kinks with the videos, getting out the kinks with the volume, the audio. So any feedback is welcome. Um, and anything that you want to just share with us, you can always follow us on Instagram. I am Kirsty dot Pratt, K-I-R-S-T-I dot P-R-A-T-T. -T. If there's questions, if there's topics you want us to discuss, if you have tips on audio, please let us know. We're bearing them out. And then Michael, you can find him also on Instagram as well. Yeah, my uh, handle is Michael, M-I-C-K-E-L dot Pratt, P-R-A-T-T. -T. Uh, we always have juicy videos and helpful content on there as well. If you want to give us a like and follow and comment, like Kirsty said, we are totally open to suggestions, especially what we really want to do when creating this community with you guys is we not only want to share our experiences and our tools and how we use these tools to create a better life for ourselves, but we also want to get your feedback um, to see what it is you want to talk about and see if there's any you know, aspects that we can bring to the table to maybe help you with the certain challenges that you're going through. And as long as it's in our wheelhouse, we will share it. If we know that it is not our wheelhouse, we will be 100% honest with you because we believe that we're always ever growing. I wouldn't say that I'm an expert by any means. Uh, I do have a background in fitness and health and holistic practitioner, and I do have a lot of knowledge, but I would not call me an expert. I would call me an ever learning student yes. um, in the process. So yeah. yeah, I would agree. Yeah. So, so how our journey began is actually we met each other very young. We met each other when we were 15 and 17 in high school. And how that went about is we ended up, uh, I was taking summer school for myself. I was looking to go for a double major in college. I was always someone who was go, 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 heavily in my masculine, still working on that to this day. <laughs> heavily in my masculine and was really a uh, perfectionist. And so for me, I was doing summer school so I could get extracurricular activities out of the way. So later in my senior year, I could take part-time college. Yeah. And I was in summer school as well. Um, <clears throat> I needed an art credit to be able to graduate, but also too, I was very heavily involved in football and track and field. And so I took a lot of, uh, PE classes, weight training classes, just so I could stay fit and ready to go whenever uh, the Friday night lights turned on. Yeah, so when we first met, we were actually a very codependent, um, insecure, toxic, toxic relationship. Absolutely. And what ended up happening is 
when we were together for a couple years, we, we heavily relied on the other person to make us happy. Um, we think that I say we, and Michael, correct me if I'm I wrong. I agree with you. But, but, and, and I believe that that's something that's heavily portrayed in our society is creating a codependent, someone else is going to make me happy relationship. And as we'll get into further down the line is, is that created a lot of issues within our relationship and within our world. And, um, a lot of insecurity within ourselves, which, which led us into a lot of health problems. Now, when we met on on that, all those things combined and me looking for that perfectionism and, and going is what that did for my health is that ran me straight into the ground. My senior year in high school, I ended up getting a stress fracture in my L4, L5. I was eating commercialized foods. I had joint pains. I had headaches. I had neck pain. I had acne, I had all sorts of stuff going on. But when you looked at me from the outside, you would think that I was a healthy person of, I'm putting air quotes if you're not watching the video, a healthy person from what society deems as healthy. But when you looked on the inside, I was actually very sick and um, toxic, toxic from the inside out. Yeah. And as far as my challenges go, you know, when we first met, I was also someone that you would look at and be like, damn, he's really healthy. I mean, I was 210 pounds. I had an eight pack. I was very strong. Um, it was actually one of the things that this woman over here really enjoyed about me. Um, I, had a, I had a killer body. Uh, but in the same aspect, <laughs> I wasn't sleeping well. I wasn't hydrating well. Uh, and I was filling my body full of just a bunch of processed foods. And then we'll get into this later on. Uh, through the journey as we go through this but later on I went uh, the complete opposite direction I started gaining weight and became pretty obese to, to the point to where I weighed 250 pounds um, and that's being generous I feel I could have weighed a little bit more than 250 but I know for sure I stepped on a scale one day and I, it read 250 um, and that was that was a big awakening for me yeah so take take our journey we ended up meeting 15 17 continually going down that road and we started to hit these health problems about so mine was my senior year I hit mine about 18 Michael just graduated he graduated two years prior and he went fully into service technician job yeah which you want to describe a little bit about that what that was how that was yeah so instead of uh, taking the college route uh, or even taking any of the summer off uh, I think I graduated on a Thursday and then I went to work on that Friday or no, that following Monday, and I started a full-time job working 40 hours a week. Uh, and then I realized, you know, this is something I'm pretty good at. Uh, so I'm going to stay in the service industry and work on, you know, kitchen equipment. Uh, that was my job. I worked on commercial food equipment. I did, I ran installs. I was part of installs. I troubleshot a lot of things. Um, and this job was very physically demanding, especially the install part of it. Uh, especially whenever we were doing giant bakery ovens. I mean, these ovens. They came in three sections, and each section weighed about 1,200 pounds minimum, and there was one section that weighed around 1,800 pounds, and so we're gotta be moving these big pieces of equipment. Um, and my fitness level just wasn't there. I was still strong, uh, but I wasn't, I wasn't, how do I wanna put this? I wasn't healthy, I just wasn't healthy. I woke up with tons of aches and pains. I had migraines, I struggled with depression, anxiety, suicidal thoughts. Um, I just, I was fat. I was, I just, I hated who I was, uh, later on in the service te uh, technician career. Um, I was very grumpy all the time and I really wasn't a pleasant person to be around. And also too, because we were so codependent and because I was looking at her to create happiness for me in my life versus finding out what makes me happy for my own self in life. Um, I was... I was pretty absent when it came to our relationship. I didn't really feed into her. I didn't really overly ask, you know, what is it that you need from me uh, when it came to comforting her for anything that she was dealing with. Um, plus also too, I'm a Capricorn and by nature, I wanted to fix everything right away. And that wasn't always, that wasn't always the right way to go. She needed some space to be able to process things. And I needed to understand that when she needed space, that wasn't, hey, um, I don't want to be with you anymore. 
It's, hey, I just need a little bit of time so I can process what I'm going through. And then we can come back together and we can go over it. Yeah, so simultaneously while he was in the service technician job full time, and, and at this point in time, a lot of our mindset was to get the house, you know, get the cars. That's the things that are, are going to make us happy. And at that time, we truly believed that. Yes, that, we did. That once I have this goal or this thing, once I have that in my life, that that's going to fill this internal void that mm. I'm feeling. And and at, at that point in time, I don't think that we were as conscious that, that there was um, per se a void that we were trying to fill. It was just the programming that we're acting out because it's really important to note that when you're from zero to seven years old, that like you you cannot discern what is truth and what's not true and so everything that's in your environment you're picking up you're picking up from your family you're picking up from your friends you're picking up from your community you're picking up if you're um <clears throat> born into a religion you're picking up the the religion so everything that's going on you're seeing as true and if we look at what's portrayed on a lot of you know media and television is it's you know get this car, get this jewelry, get this house, have the kids, have the dog, and that's going to make you really happy. And so, Michael, at this point, how old were you at, at that point uh, um, in the service technician job? Well, I... Beginning of it? In the very beginning, I was 19 years old when I jumped into it. Um, so, so about 19, I would say to about 19 to 19 maybe to... when you were till about 21, things seemed like they were going in the direction. Yeah that we wanted them yeah. to go and he we wasn't really, we were really keeping up with the joneses really yeah yeah and i wouldn't say that he put the weight on right away so simultaneously while he's doing that i'm finishing up high school i'm coming off a stress fracture in my back and i decide to go to college to be a middle school teacher i at that point in time um i love i love teaching kids i've always had uh a fairly good knack for for teaching kids but yeah. i didn't understand to that degree how impactful who we are can be on kids especially yeah. when when they they follow what you do not necessarily what you say and so at that point in my journey i was then you know i i rehab my back again putting in quotations because at that point in time um i was doing the rehab that a lot of society goes through not understanding how food sleep water proper movement and functioning of your core breathing play into that your breathing and your mindset i did not understand those health principles which is what we've learned through the czech institute which is a world-renowned holistic institute i did not understand that and so i went through the traditional pattern um to rehab my back and i was out for about a year I was out for about a year. I was going to school, um, <clears throat> working a job pretty much full time because I wanted to stay in town. Again, we're still working towards getting the house, getting the cars, doing all this stuff. And what ended up happening is about my junior year, it was the end. It was the, it was my end of my sophomore year going into my junior year. I was in college, in college, end of sophomore year, going into my junior year in college. And I was watching the show American Ninja Warrior. And this is something that I used to always watch when I was a kid. I used to watch it at Sasuke, um, which is the Japan version, which is actually where American Ninja Warrior came from. And it's if you haven't seen this show, it's pretty much a series of obstacles that include agility, upper body, grip strength, balance, explosiveness. explosiveness. And for me, as someone with a background in sports, I had always been very persistent driven driven um i would say for the most part I, I was pretty naturally gifted in sports but when i applied myself i i became that much better and at that point in time in american ninja warrior women were just starting to get out there that was the season that i was watching was the season when casey catanzaro michelle warnke and um i have her in my brain the From rock colorado climber. yeah rock climber um I'm so sorry. Megan. 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 I'm I'm drawing a blank on your last name. She was super famous too. She was she's really a, good she's athlete. She's a skilled, and a skilled super rock. sweet person. Like super sweet person. Yeah, skilled rock climber. And so these three women, it was the first time any woman has gotten up the warped wall and these three women did it. And so 
to put that in perspective, women in the sport were just breaking in. And so I was sitting there and I was doing homework because again, still super driven and still looking for, um, I was heavily looking for someone to tell me that I was good enough because mm. I didn't think I was good enough. And so I thought again, when I got those accomplishments, when I got the double major, then I would get the recognition that I was so desperately wanting someone to tell me that I could have. And so that driven ended up turning into, hey, I could do that on that TV show. I can play that sport. And what ended up having happening is, is you had to be 21 at the time, which the age limit, I think, has like yeah, I think it's 15 now. Majorly lowered. But at that point in time, it was 21 and I was just turning 21 that like in two months. And again, at that point, because it was fairly new, there was not like any gyms around. I ended up looking at about three different gyms and two of the gyms were not Ninja Warrior gyms. They were just gymnastics gyms, pretty much doing tumbling and stuff like that and didn't really have obstacles. But we found a gym that was about 40 minutes away from us at the time and we went for my 21st birthday and sucked we yes. sucked <laughs> yeah i think there was what 10 obstacles there when we first started yeah right? there was, was probably about 10 class there was 10 obstacles i think i was only able to complete one obstacle um which is pretty pretty sad <laughs> for myself uh yeah i mean i got the quintuple steps at that yeah, point two and obstacles, uh yeah. And monkey bars and, and and they took you through the devil steps which if you haven't seen the show it's pretty much like stairs but instead of like walking up there them they have openings on them and you climb them from the back end um think about almost like those open staircases sometimes they have them in apartment complexes yeah. or or just you know outside and you're using buildings your hands and you're doing a constant pull up yeah and then you have the cliffhanger which is where it's anywhere from you know i mean you can get super thin to a half an inch to two and a half inches where you're just grabbing with your fingers the warped wall at that point in time was 14 feet yep. um was changing to 14 and a half the gym that we went to was 14 and a half feet tall um which at that point was like a big deal and it was a pretty steep wall too and it's, it's to give you an idea we went traveling all over the country you know competing in ninja warrior and which we'll get more into we'll get more into that but the gym we first started at was one of the steeper walls to go up yeah and that also made it a little terrifying um which really made us really work on the mental side of things too yeah absolutely and so um so, you know, I saw it on the TV show, turned 21 in a couple months and went and tried it out and honestly fell in love with it, fell in love with it. it. It put this spark inside me. I don't know if any of you guys can relate where sometimes you feel like you're just going through the motions or you feel like you're living your life for other people and maybe not fully for other people or you don't realize all the masks you had on. And this was a spark of something in my life that I truly loved and it was something that I loved for myself to have that interplay and so fast forward from that 21st birthday is i decided that i was going to apply to be on the show and with me being a virgo like i'm all in i'm either in or i'm not like it's it's really hard for me to be like gray yeah. um <laughs> which is another yeah. thing that i'm There's working no on gray gray is not in <laughs> her vocabulary it's working on it working on it that and flow that and flow. And so that whole year when I was 21 is I was doing everything that I could as soon as I was done with done with my work at college because my college was halfway between where we lived and the gym. So what I would do is I would go to school and then when I had long breaks, I would go to the gym and then I would go back to school and finish my school and then go home. And at this point in time, we're running, you know, we're, we're up at five six in the morning and probably not going to bed until about 11 or 12 at night which yeah if if you know anything about sleep and its importance on your body is from 10 p.m to 2 a.m the physical body repairs itself and then from 2 a.m to 6 a.m the psychological body repairs itself so those those windows don't move and so with us going to bed at 11 12 at night we're not getting the proper rest for our body, especially with already being catabolic. And because the body cannot tell the difference with stress, mental, emotional, physical, or spiritual, 
it's taking the stress of my physical body, it's taking the stress of the food that I'm eating, it's taking the stress of the toll with, with my mental in school, it's taking the stress with my emotional aspects. Um, you know, I wasn't really expressive, expressive of my feelings, which again, we'll, we'll get more into that, maybe not deeply in this podcast, but talk about feelings and emotions and how they get trapped into our organs and how that can affect our health. And then at that point in time, I was also trying to figure out what my connection to spirituality was, what my connection to God was as I grew up really, um, I say really Catholic. I grew up in a Catholic household, went to a Catholic school and nothing wrong with Catholicism, religion. And for me, it was not a religion that resonated. It was not a religion that I truly overly believed in, especially there were things that I knew about myself as a kid. Again, we'll get into a little bit longer later, but I knew as a kid that made me feel like I was not a good human being or that I was doomed uh, right away. So, so adding all those stresses and now I'm trying to compete at a high level and I was going to the gym consistently, actually within almost every day, <laughs> almost every day, which, which was not, which was not healthy and ended up applying to get on the show, ended up applying to get on the show and made it into season, season seven, yep. season seven was the first season. And that was actually 2015 at that point. And I had the athletic ability and what it, you know, what happened is, is I think I ran about two competitions prior to that competition, yeah. which is not many, which is not many. And, um, I've gotten, uh, actually it was three, three, I think two or three. Yeah. Uh, I was thinking, yeah, there uh, was Shinobi, Shinobi Warrior, Warrior Sports, Sports out in Springfield. And then, um, didn't might have only been two. Yeah, but I guess I, I oh, probably ran, ran that it. One. You yeah, didn't yeah, yeah. actually compete in it. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Okay. Yeah, so and, just two. Yeah. And at that point I did get the warped wall. I've gotten a few warped walls at that point, which again was like a huge, huge deal. And 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 we went on to season seven, which I think it'd be good to do uh, another episode all on just the ninja journey. Ninja journey yeah. and getting deep into that and uh talking about you know, uh, what it's like to have camera in your face, pressure to perform, pressure to perform and fans in the stands, stuff like that. So if that is something that you all would be interested in hearing about, um, let us know. We'll make a podcast on that. Absolutely. Because it it was a big, long time for that (laughs) stuff. It was a big, it was a big part in self-worth, confidence, living life for, for myself and figuring out what I want. So Fast forward, season seven, I go to compete in Kansas City and I fall really early. I fall really early. And it's funny because you can actually, I think, find it or it's like, it like constantly seems to replay that episode series over and over. And I come out of the water and I'm like slamming my hands and you can see, you know, I'm saying fuck and shit and all this other stuff. And, you know, I'm surprised I played it. I'm surprised they played it, but yeah, you were pretty pissed, but I spiraled, I spiraled a little bit in my head and because I was still looking for heavily outside validation at that point, I then kicked it up a notch to say, I got to do this harder. I got to do this more. And so what ended up happening is, is, you know, if you're not watching the videos is Michael was almost going right where he's he's working, he's going full time and, and service technician job isn't just, you know, your eight to three or eight to four job. No. Like you, you work eight and then you work until the calls are done. So and actually I was starting at seven. So, so Michael's going right. And then I'm starting to go left and drift on to my own thing. And, and we're supposed to be getting married this summer, <laughs> yeah. which we deeply loved each other at that point, but it was we were slowly starting to split in different ways and, and live life in a different direction. And so what ended up happening that summer is we ended up getting married, which was awesome. Yeah. It was beautiful. Best party I've ever been to. It was best party. Hands down. Hands down. Um, and then, and then I knew right away, as soon as we were married, we, you know, we moved in with each other, which, I wish we would have moved in sooner and figured out what living was like before marriage. Yeah, hindsight Um, though. 
Uh, which again, we we definitely want to do a podcast all on relationships. There's a lot we can say about relationships, and I agree. Yeah, all that stuff. Yeah. Um, and about a month in, so we're in the summer of 2015 at this point. I'm going from my junior to senior year. Michael's still working full time as a service technician, and I was up in the middle of the night <laughs> organizing the kitchen. Yep. And I couldn't sleep and I was restless. And, and yeah, there was a numerous myriad of other factors and lifestyle habits that were going into that. But I hit this wall of realizing I didn't want to be a teacher anymore. I didn't want to be a teacher in that manner anymore. Yeah, in the, in the education system. Yes. I, Your standard education system. Yes. I wanted, to, I wanted to become a full-time ninja warrior. And I also wanted to teach other people Ninja Warrior because when I turned 21, so back in 2014 and I was showing more and more into the gym, the gym started to get more popular and start expanding. And so I started stepping more into a trainer role. And so by January, 2015, I was in a trainer role, did season seven, ended up getting married. And I was like, I, I can't do this. And, and I thought about finishing college, but I wasn't going to be finishing it for me. I was finishing it for my parents and at in college I had uh, a 3.9 GPA and with that like yes I had the success there yes I was on track to get a double major yes um, it could have been a nice steady job yes I could have impacted a lot of of the youth and the next generation which is why we you know call our business next generations fitness is to yep continually inspire the next generations or any generation. Um, but my heart wasn't in it anymore. And so, like I said earlier, Virgo, um, in or out, man, um, I'm one or the other. And, and it got to the point to where we went over to my parents' house. <clears throat> um, I started, I started my fourth year of college. I was one week in, and I finally told Michael, I didn't want to do this. And Thankfully, Michael's always been really supportive in that matter. Yeah. Um, I think the reason why I've always just been so supportive is, and I tell this to everyone I, I <clears throat> we have this type of conversation with, I've never met another human, let alone woman, more driven to find success in any task she sets her mind to. I mean, I can go back, well, we've been together, what, 14 years now, and any yep. like you wanted to go be Same a teacher thing. you were going to be a teacher and you know you were going for a double major most people yeah. don't usually do that in know? four years you wanted to play golf your first time ever playing golf you missed state by what a stroke one, one stroke. stroke right you wanted to go play track you've never done that before we you made to it to state first year <laughs> boom you know you were in select soccer you were always driven again too when she first started ninja warrior she couldn't mm -hmm. do a pull-up she couldn't do a pull-up and within six months, I mean, she was absolutely dominating competitions. I mean, it, and then even further in the Ninja Warrior career, we would go to some competitions and she'd go check us in. I would go find a spot to put our gear and everything. And I'd start mingling with everyone. That was my job, not job, but I, I made it a job. I did a lot of networking and boosted not only the gym that we were a part of which at the time was core complex and this is this is uh the time frame that he's talking about is is kind of what we're we're going into 2015 2016 uh yeah 2015 2016 end of 2015 and then heavily 2016 yeah yeah and i mean there would be competitions where i'm going <clears> in <throat> and i've got good relationships with a lot of the local ninjas and and the the ninjas and they'll be like oh man looks like i'm not taking first place today kirsty's here I mean, that's the kind of impact she had on not only just that sport, but anything she sets her mind to. And just that belief in her that knowing that whatever she wants to do, she's going to be successful at it. And I think that's where it came from. She's never, not that she's tried to do things for me, but she's never let me down in that aspect. Yeah, and, and you've just, you know, when I, when I first quit, so when I first quit, um, my other job prior to working as a trainer, I mean, I went from like $400 a week to like $80 a week. So uh, having a supportive partner during the process definitely made it easier. Now, there are certain things that, that we'll talk about and we'll do different episodes. This would be good with the, the you know, partner episode. Yeah. 
of, of there were definitely areas where we were not supportive of each other and we were um, at disagreements with. But for the most part, for the ninja journey, he was really supportive. And so we went to my parents' house, told them I'm quitting my fourth year of college with both of them heavily wanted me to finish, um, you know, out of love. They, they were uh, wanting me to know that I, I had a secure putting up finger quotes again, a secure job in a steady form of income and a good education and, and a degree to look on the resume. Correct. And the way that I felt about it is, is I was, I was done. I was done and if you were having pains weren't you i was having yeah i was having bodily pains i was up in the middle of the night i was having horrible acne and this is a one week into yeah. my fourth year and as a fourth year teacher your last semester you do uh, a practicum mm -hmm. i believe and that is where you pretty much teach the whole semester and i knew that i was not available like i was not available that's not where i wanted to go that was not what I was passionate about and and yes it looked like I was quote unquote quitting but the way that I I saw it is I was transitioning and at that point I was telling them I wanted to be a Czech practitioner which is for corrective holistic exercise kinesiology which is what we talked about earlier a world-renowned institute they have a mechanical side and they have a holistic side and ended up telling them that I wanted to quit work at the gym be a Czech practitioner and do ninja full time, which did not go over so well at first. Um, yeah, it was pretty rough. I think, I think it was, that was one of the more difficult conversations we've had with your parents uh, on that. Um, on I mean, school, there's, yeah, there's, on, on numerous there's numerous conversations, conversations that we've had with my that parents. Was, that was one of the first big ones. And I think, <clears throat> I think that was, uh, I think how I we did it was relatively <clears throat> very mature and wise of us because what we did was we didn't just go in and without a plan and say hey um this is what we're going to do you know we sat down for at least a week week and a half almost two weeks and discussed how we were going to make things work with her moving into this transition and it also helped that as a service technician i mean i was 23 at the time making anywhere from 60 to seventy thousand dollars a year um that's not bad when you're that when you're that you know young and plus we were in an apartment we didn't really have that much overhead when it comes to our bills and so yeah. it wasn't like it was going to be a big you know anchor to us for her to move into this plus yeah. i also knew in my heart of hearts she was going to be really successful and she was yeah yeah and so that kind of led that journey and so again michael and i michael's yes we're together yes we're in agreement with this but we're both trying to work towards the house towards the car towards the recognition towards the thing and we didn't realize how slowly that was pulling us away from each other and yeah. so we ended up i ended up heavily diving into ninja over the course like michael said of end of 2015 2016 I ended up getting my NASM certification, my NASM corrective exercise coach certification. Then I ended up getting in 2016, my check, um, at that time it was check exercise coach, which it's now IMS one. I, so integrated movement science. science level one. And that's where you look at the body. You look at the rib angle you look at the pelvis you look at the lumbar thoracic cervical spine you look at the core core function you look at <clears throat> posture. How the posture how the multifidus is working in in the um the back the inner and outer units and it really was up leveling my my um knowledge i guess yeah. my knowledge in the in the fitness side of things but in all that time again as you can just say like we didn't just transition and do nothing. It was still, it's kind of almost like a, a train that was going faster. We weren't, we weren't slowing down by any means. Oh no, no, we weren't. No, we weren't. And because we weren't overly slowing down, um, that also took part into running our health into the ground. Um, sorry, as I adjust here, we are in an RV. So if you don't know, uh, we are full-time RVers. So we At are the moment. coming to you. Uh, in our RV, so space is a little limited. So yeah, apologize for the shakiness. I've just bumped my knee on the counter. Um, but yeah, yeah, back to you, love. Yeah, yeah. And so, um, and that's uh, 
another thing we will do as RV has taught us a lot about boundary space, communication, um, yeah. all that, that will be definitely another one. And so 2016, so 2016, we start heavily traveling at the beginning of 2016, going to as many competitions as possible because at this point, American Ninja Warrior films in the springtime and how it was is they would go to all different locations over the U.S. They had about five qualifiers at that time and they only took 100 applicants um, per region. So you got to think out of the whole show, they're maybe taking five to 600 people. Yep. And then from that, that's pulling from anywhere from 40,000 to 50,000 applicants. So you have to make yourself stand, stand out. out. And because season seven, they had very high hopes for me, which I can't believe we didn't mention this in the marriage thing. They had very high hopes for me in season seven. And with falling early, I knew that I needed to stand out in my application process. You go through this whole application process, fill it out. You send in a submission video of saying why they should select you. And so a way that I helped stand us out is I convinced Michael, which he was not appeased at Superverse, to go to the Ninja Warrior Gym on our wedding day. And I ended up doing the Sam ladder in my wedding dress, ended up doing a rope to rope to cargo net swing, cannonball alley, which devil is like- Devil steps. Devil steps. Hanger. Yeah, and, and we had the whole bridal party. Rolling barrel. <laughs> we had the whole bridal party there. Yep. My parents just said they do it after we do our nice photos. So we did our nice photos and then we went and had fun, but it was it was a great time. And so yeah. um, started, started uh, getting my application ready, sending it in and competing all in 2017 and, or 2016. And then we go to season eight. And season eight was a phenomenal season for me. Yeah. Um, that's when I really started to gain some traction within the show, within the show's, um, I guess, arena and sphere because the show isn't the only competitions like Michael was saying earlier. We started traveling all over the US because there was not a lot of gyms when we first started we were a gym the next closest gym was maybe 40 minutes away and then the next closest gym was like two and a half hours away <clears throat> yeah in at that point in time. Right? yeah in springfield yeah. and so it wasn't necessarily close and you didn't make a lot of money in the sport no you did not you you, you were, <laughs> if, if so kirsty won first quite a bit for her division and it was pretty much winning our entry feedback <laughs> and covered our gas to get down and back. And that he, was pretty much it. I mean, she got some cool stuff too. I mean, there was yeah. one competition, we, she won this giant, you know, duffel bag full of all kinds of and stuff. And I won some holds and I won a slack line. I ended up giving the holds to, to a friend back in St. Louis, but um, slack lines still have. But and, and that was a lot of time when we were traveling, like we made it work. We didn't stay in a lot of hotels. We've stayed in a hotel of three times that I can remember, one in Texas, one in New Jersey, and one in Northern California. Uh, we stayed in a hotel um, in Springfield. Oh yeah, we yeah. did, that was the first one. But we did that because my dad was there too. Yeah. Yeah, but a lot of the time we also stayed in gyms. Yeah, we slept <laughs> or, in gyms. Or we made the trip in a day. So <clears throat> one of the trips we made was actually a week before our wedding, we made a trip. Mm. We were in Missouri. Tennessee. We made a trip all the way down to Tennessee. I think we left at two, three in the morning, competed, and then drove back. And so, so anyway, season eight, season eight, and um, this is just this is just how we do it. So hopefully you guys um, are good with the style because I don't think the, the style style is going to change. Yeah, um, we like to flow. <laughs> flow. So season eight, <clears throat> season eight, I ended up competing and. You know, it was one of those moments where I ended up falling on the fifth obstacle. So in qualifiers, in qualifiers, they have six obstacles. And the last obstacle, the sixth obstacle is the warped wall. And I ended up falling on the fifth obstacle. And at that point in my life, I was uh, fr afraid of success, mm. yet at the same time wanted success. Um, and wanted the recognition. And I ended up missing uh, the finals by one slot. And at this point in time, they weren't doing uh, top female, top male. It was uh, males and females together. Yeah. Uh, so so out of running and, and becoming 31 out of 
um, 100 contestants was pretty good, both yeah. male and female. Megan Martin's her name. Mm. Megan Martin. Um, yep, Megan Martin. Megan Martin was the other girl. She was the rock climber. Very strong competitor. Very strong, very sweet. And um, also very intimidating. <laughs> like when it was ready to roll, like she, she just put she on she can this, turn it on, man. Yeah, she just turned on this. She can this, turn it on. This face of determination, and it's like, okay, she's about to fuck some shit up. Yeah. In a good way. Yeah, yeah. And so, um, and I remember that because Brian Arnold was a guy who. Oh yeah. He, I was in thirty, which would have taken me to the finals the next night. They run them back to back, and you actually run in the middle of the night, so you're running anywhere from like ten thirty to like. 4 30 in the morning and you don't get to test the obstacles you you have someone demonstrate it um i think a full full ninja full ninja podcast episode would be really really good yeah um and so what ended up happening is brian was one of the last runners to run and i'm like i'm i know like you don't know that it's going to happen in Ninja. Anything can happen in Ninja because you only get one shot. But he was a solid competitor. Very solid. There is no reason that he yeah. shouldn't have uh, finished. And he did. And so that ended up bumping me out from doing the finals the next night. But I had my hopes for the wild card at that point. And wild card was when they would take any participants um, who did fairly well and they would fly you out to Las Vegas and you could still be a part of the finals, which was... Uh, Mount Midoriyama and that was a four stage competition at that point and with that four stages I ended up I ended up continuing training so so the finals is in like June or July July I think it's, it's in July I think it airs in July I think it oh, starts in well, June yeah you're right it does I think air it in starts, July. In, starts June. in June it starts in June and you're in the springtime, so I ran in about April, and so I knew if I'm gonna run in June, I need to continue training. And so I continued training, ended up getting the call, became a wild card, went to Vegas. That was an experience in its own. Yes, it and, was. Uh, and ended up placing top third in females. Ended up placing top third in females. And so I'm continually getting this success, but at the same time as I'm getting this, um, athletic success is what I would call it because I wouldn't just call it complete success because my I, idea of what success means is completely different now than then. Um, I was also having more bodily aches, more bodily pains, mm. more bodily um, issues. Michael and I at that point, uh, we were still flowing really good, but I wouldn't say our communication was the best. When we had arguments, we still really heavily had yelling. Screaming yeah. matches. Yeah, screaming matches. Um, we were still continuing the train of the buildup of, of living with the Joneses. And it took about another year of continuing this. That pattern. This pattern. Yep. This pattern uh, before, it, before it hit a headway. So continue that pattern for a year. Season. Oh, no, because wasn't Ninja vs. Ninja that... Uh, Ninja vs. Ninja was also there in that year. on season eight. <clears throat> so you placed third in Vegas for females. And I think that filmed in August. In August of that same year, season eight, which was what, That's 2016? That's what it was. Right? Yeah. That was Ninja vs. Ninja. Yeah, it was. For those of you who don't know... Uh, it, well, it was Ninja Team, Ninja, Ninja, Team Ninja, oh, yeah, Warrior Team Ninja Warrior. That's what it was called for the first two seasons. And then season three, it came to Ninja vs. Ninja. So yeah. I'm going to give a timeline real quick. So season eight in the spring of 2016, finals where I placed third. Summer. Summer of 2016, and then now going out to LA to film Team Ninja Warrior in August of 2016. Yeah, which would be the fall. Yeah. And uh, so Team Ninja Warrior or Ninja vs Ninja, it's essentially it's a group of three highly skilled ninjas, and you you and your group of three compete against other groups of three on the same identical course. Um, with one spot that you can kind of cross lanes if you wanted to. Two guys, one girl uh, to every team. Yeah, two guys, one girl to every team. Um, and yeah, boy, did you make a splash. Yeah, yeah. So what was sad about this one, though, this was the only competition that Michael uh, wasn't at. Um, no, I wasn't able to go to any of the Team Ninja Warrior ones. And the reason, the reason why sad. that is we, we bought a house uh, that summer. We bought a house, or well, we bought a house that spring. We bought a house in May of 2016, and um, we 
spent our money on that. Yeah, so we didn't have the money <laughs> we to fly spent out our, there. We spent our money on that. And I think at that time we also had um, a car that we spent money on as yep, well. Yeah, bought a brand new Challenger. Not a brand new, bought a used Challenger. Um, and so we were heavily living with the Joneses. And so on Team Ninja Warrior, it was, I was on the average JoJo's with uh, Jimmy Bogle and JoJo Bynum. And Beautiful people. And uh, we, I would love to do a podcast with them and get Absolutely. their story. They're amazing people. Oh. And um, and with that is uh, my first race is I was going against Jesse Graff. Now, if you haven't watched the show American Ninja Warrior, at that point, Jesse Graff was ranked number one. She just finished. Uh, she was the first female to finish stage one in Las Vegas that summer. So a few months prior, she just finished. Super consistent competitor. And we were going head to head. And... I think a uh, majority of the people did not think I was going to win. Jimmy and Jojo uh, say that they were one of the few that knew that I could. Oh, yeah. And obviously Michael did as well. And that was actually my first race on this as well. And so uh, we ended up taking off. And you can actually find the video on YouTube. We ended up taking off. And long story short, uh, I ended up winning the race. I, ha I, was, I was ahead a good chunk of the time, but it came down to the warped wall. Her shoes were wet, mine were not. I ended up getting over the wall and um, slammed the buzzer and was ecstatic. And then it came plummeting down. It came plummeting down because I was heavily wanting someone to tell me I was good enough because I still did not believe it at that time. And um, and yeah, it was it was this. Uh, void that void i was trying to fill with a house with a car with a competition with people telling me i'm enough and um it was it was great winning i would not take that back it was honestly one of the most fun races of my life um because it was you know i love competition and i held a good chunk of winning first still going down the same path 27 uh 2016 going into 2017 was going to a ton of competitions, continually winning first, second, first, second, and going into season nine, I'm like, this is my year. I'm, you know, I'm consistently doing well. I'm, I'm, you know, uh, performing. It's great. But at that point in time, um, Michael and I were slowly starting to drift. Um, I was not enjoying my job. I was wanting to become part owner of a gym I was working at and helped build up over those course of the years. Michael and I did a lot of advertising. Yeah, I would say we were the catalyst in putting that gym on the map. Um, I mean, we were constantly wearing their merchandise. We were constantly um, inspiring the owner to put in new obstacles, uh, new challenges. Uh, for not only Kirsty to practice on, but all the other ninjas that was there. You know, she developed the curriculum there for the kids' classes. She ran, you know, classes for adults uh, on top of, you know, your traditional personal training aspect as well. And so, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we put a lot of energetic, um, we put a lot of time and energy into yeah. becoming a huge part of this gym. Yeah, ran, uh, yeah, you know, and, and that was something that was simultaneously going on while competing. You know, I'm running the gym, I'm working on merchandising, I'm hiring coaches, I'm training the coaches, I'm figuring out how to make our systems better with manuals. And, you know, they weren't heavily online, though the website was really poor, so I redid the website. Um, there was a lot of things I put into that. Uh, we painted the gym, yep. cleaned the gym. Um, and so again, that was just another avenue of looking for validation and really making the owner, uh, my dad, my father figure, um, at that point and trying to get that, hey, I'm good enough. And so when season nine came, you know, things were already starting to be rocky, but I was like, this is it. This is going to be amazing. This is going to be awesome. And it wasn't. It wasn't. Um, there was an instance with where I was running the course and I, f I, I, I stumbled on obstacle three. And when, when you technically are eliminated on the course, all the lights will go red. And so it'll tell you that you are eliminated. 
and none of, them, none of the lights went red. And they said if you stumbled at this point, you can get up and you can continue to go. Um, and so I did, no lights were red. And then when I went on the fourth obstacle, I almost made it through and I was on my last lache and my hands, they, they just gave. I was really excited at this point because in this season they were doing the top five females, top five males. And they brought me over to a screen and I remember looking at Michael and my, you know, kids from the gym came and, you know, I'm like, yeah, and we're all celebrating and stuff like that. And they ended up showing me on T, on, you know, trying to get a reaction out of me. And they say, can you see that monitor right there? And I said, yeah. And they're like, well, you did this, so you're disqualified. How does that make you feel? And everything in me just wanted to go to rage, to fuck you, to this is nothing. And it was everything that I've been bottling up for years and years and years of people to tell me I'm enough. People to say you know, um, I'm an amazing person and, and, and all the things that go with it and, and to have the confidence. And it wasn't, I put on this exterior shield, um, and I was cracking on the inside and Michael, we still have pictures back then. That's when Michael really started to get big. I started to get real fat. Yeah. That's when, uh, your lifestyle started to catch up with you. And, and so that started, that started the spiral and that started the pivot and that started, us starting to change our lives Um, because I spiraled on that hard and what ended up happening is from that that led to an affair uh, that led to me stepping out of our marriage that and a few other reasons um, with denying that I enjoyed both women and men um, denying that I wasn't giving myself self-love Um, denying that I wasn't in a place that made me happy, denying that, um, I was looking for validation and outside things instead of internal validation. And so. And I would also say like, this is where our communication really became like two volcanoes erupting next to each other. Yeah. Um, We weren't, we were never taught how to effectively communicate, communicate. Um, we just, we just weren't, we weren't. We weren't taught that and I didn't know how to listen to her um, and I didn't know how to console her properly. She, I didn't also know how to express my own feelings and my own needs as to what I needed. Um, <clears throat> as a man, I was brought up to where, you know, you just stuck it up and you deal with it. You just keep your nose to the grindstone. You don't talk about your feelings. You bury them deep down inside. Um, that's not something that's okay to do. Um, and so that's a pattern that ultimately ended up breaking, um, which led to where we are now, beautiful life. Um, but yeah, our communication was not on point. We both hated our lives Mm -hmm. individually Mm -hmm. and we didn't have a, we were married on paper, but Mm -hmm. we weren't, we weren't in the relationship. We Mm -hmm. were somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Uh, we were constantly going through the motions. Our sex life was rough. Yeah, yeah. It, if yeah. it was, it got to a point where it was just non-existent for mm-hmm. pretty much a fucking year. And um, I make that noise, and you'll know why I make that noise because it's way different now. And we had to rebuild a lot of our beliefs around that. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. It just we just the lack of communication between each other, but then also too, like Kirsty said, not understanding how to love herself. Neither of us knew how to love our own selves. And, you know, if you're someone who coaches with us, you'll start to understand that, you know, you can only love someone as good as you can love yourself. And so until you learn how to effectively love yourself, you're not going to be able to effectively love someone else because even if you do put a lot of time and energy and love into someone or something else, you're going to be operating out of a deficit of love. Um, Meaning you don't have the energy to consistently show up to love your partner or love that thing um, as effective. And so that, that really led to a lot of, um, It actually led, well, not just to her affair, but it led to, we split up for almost three months. Yeah. So, so we'll get, we'll get more into this. We'll get more into this. We wanted to start, start with a brief introduction of this. And so if you're wanting to continue to follow along for our journey, 
how how our membership program is going to work is we're going to be releasing episodes weekly and we're going to be diving into these topics we're going to be diving into communication self-love health what we've done how we've how the tools we've used to create a life that we enjoy we love we don't feel like we're wearing a mask that we've created in our relationship and so if you want to continue to get the rest of this episode you can join us over on our self mastery membership in that program we have three different levels uh in level three you get bi-weekly coaching calls we have once a month men's group once a month women's group um, you get our cookbook you get access to the private portal and you get extended bonus content in level two you get extended bonus uh content which after this we're going to be sharing tools that you can do for self-love yep. um, tools that we've we've used um, for you to actually take home and use and implement you also get access to our cookbook you also get access to the private portal you get extended versions of these episodes and then level one you get extended versions of these episodes and then you get access to the private portal so we try to make it easy for everyone but what we're going to do is we're going to go and we're going to pause this episode right here and we're going to start getting into the affair and continue on with our journey and make sure we get you guys your bonus content so if you followed along for this thank you thank you welcome to our first episode and we'll see you guys soon absolutely <laughs>